collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things, part 11, making a new crankshaft for the twin Victoria using a piece of accurately ground silver steel and making sure that all of the parts are lined correctly and fit together perfectly. Before I start making the crankshaft, I'm going to check the crank webs. And to do this, I'm using a hand reamer. And hand reamers are slightly tapered. Very soon, though, they do become parallel. But I'm finding, with this crank web that's one of the originals from the pre-machine kit, it's OK on the end of the reamer, but as I rotate it, it stiffens up slightly. Not only is the hole ever so slightly too small, it's also ever so slightly tapered. The crankshaft for the Twin Victoria that I'm about to make will not be tapered, it will be parallel. So very gently, I'm winding the crank web down the rest of the reamer. Over now to my Myford lathe. I'm using the Myford for a lot of these jobs because it's very good and it's quite small. And people keep telling me that you can't do this and you can't do that unless you have a large lathe, but this is nonsense. It's not the size of the instrument that matters, it's the way it is used. I have a picture hung in my recording studio of a man playing a very large lute, and that's the caption, and it's very true. There is, however, a much better way of making crankshafts, and I'll tell you about that very shortly. What I'm doing at the moment, as always, is facing across the front of the piece of bar, and by the sound of the cutting tool, I think the tip needs changing, but the finish on the metal is OK. The next part of the job is to centre drill the end. Not too far, not too deep. These shallow centres at each end of the crankshaft are only there to give the effect of the crankshaft having been turned between centres, which it probably would have been had it have been a full-size one. With the facing done and the centre hole drilled, it's time to turn down this piece of bar to allow me to fit the crankweb on the end of it. Currently it's 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and I need to turn this down to 3 eighths of an inch and I'm not going to use a micrometer for this job, I'll just do lots of test fits. I've missed out a lot of the turning because it does get a bit tedious. I would like to mention at this stage that I do not want a mirror finish on this part. This original newly reamed crankweb needs to be a very tight push fit onto this part. When I fit the crankweb to the crankshaft and then try to remove it, it needs to be a good firm fit and at the moment it's slightly tight. I started off the job using some emery cloth but really I need to do it this way, with a piece of wood to keep it flat. I'm only applying light pressure to the work because this is very close to the tolerance that I need. I'm using the piece of wood behind the emery cloth to make sure that this part is not tapered in any way. Finally, I have the fit that I require. I'll be drilling a hole all the way through the crankshaft and the crankweb. Then, after I've used a taper reamer, I will fit a taper pin, but only to this side. For the other end of the crankshaft, I will be using some Loctite 603 retaining compound. I will also be drilling it too, and using a taper reamer and fitting a taper pin, just to make the crankwebs match at both sides. I've applied some Loctite 603 to the end of the crankshaft as well as the hole in the crankweb and here I'm pressing the parts together using the tailstock chuck. The crankweb at this side, which is painted black, the original one, is a really good tight fit on the end of the crankshaft. Here's a before and after shot. Obviously the one with the crankwebs fitted is the one I've just made and the one at the bottom part of the picture that's badly marked and a bit undersized is the original. All of the lathes in my workshop are quite accurate. The problem is though, three jaw chucks generally are not very accurate. And to make one of these, I would normally use my collet chuck that fits on my Smart and Brown lathe. It's a Bernard multi-size collet chuck. It was really expensive 40 years ago. That's why I don't show it very much, because it's not something that most people have in their home workshop. And that is why, because these are tutorial videos, I use tooling that is commonly found in home workshops. The collet system that I use is extremely accurate, which is more than can be said for a lot of budget collet systems. I bought a set a while back which was so bad I threw it in the bin. 
This is the only time in the video I'm showing my micrometer, and I'm just using it to compare it with the piece of silver steel that I bought, which is accurately ground to 7 16 of an inch diameter. And to be honest, it's very close, but not close enough. With the new crankshaft fitted into the main bearings, with both of the crank webs in place, it's a perfect fit. I am going to need to rerun this in once I've got it all back together. A couple of things are still bothering me though. The massively overscaled 2BA bolt heads, obviously. But look at this oil cup. It's a bit out of round and it's not screwed all the way in. The oil cup on the left hand side, believe it or not, is cross threaded in the hole. I intend to change both of these. But I'll use them for the moment to apply some oil to the crankshaft. I wanted to check the fits of the main bearings. And yes, these are definitely parallel. And they are the right size, although the eccentric sheaves are a little bit tight. I'm really pleased with the way this crankshaft feels. I can turn it easily by hand, and there is no slop whatsoever. Quite apart from being a machinist, the skill of fitting is very important. And it's a mixture of art and science. It's pointless making parts accurately if the tolerances are not correct and they don't fit together. This is very important. And that concludes this episode about making the crankshaft. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.